Hi, I'm young adult author Megan Crew, and today I'm going to read a short selection from my new book, The Way We Fall. For those who aren't familiar with the book, it's about a 16-year-old girl named Kaylin who finds herself trapped in her small island community when the government quarantines it in the face of a deadly new epidemic. It's written in journal entries, and this is from the beginning of the October 13th entry, so there's no confusion. This book is set in Canada, and that's why Thanksgiving is happening in October. <clears throat> we were supposed to have Thanksgiving dinner today. Mom surprised us by showing us the turkey she started thawing in secret yesterday. She must have bought it before Gav's group ransacked the grocery store. We've still got a lot to be thankful for, she said. The five of us are still healthy, and your father's making progress with the vaccine. Honestly, we have way more to complain about than to celebrate, but it was a relief to see her smiling. So I said I'd help with the cooking, and Meredith volunteered too. Drew begged off, claiming he was busy with something on the computer, but I caught a glimpse of him slipping out the back door a few minutes later. We started getting dinner ready a little after lunchtime, even though Dad said the earliest he'd be home was six. Mom was preparing the turkey over by the oven. I was peeling potatoes by the sink. Meredith was setting the table. I was telling her to just use the regular knives and forks, that we didn't have anything fancy for holidays, when Mom suddenly went still. Before I had a chance to ask her what was up, she walked right out of the kitchen. The turkey was sitting there on the cutting board, with half the stuffing still in the bowl. I figured she must have needed to go to the bathroom, but when I'd, figured, when I'd finished with the potatoes and washed the slimy feeling off my hands, she still hadn't come back. Meredith wanted to know what she could do now that the table was set. Why don't you take a break, I said. You can play Nintendo if you want. Mom wasn't anywhere downstairs, and the bathroom was empty. Her bedroom door was closed. I knocked. Don't come in, she said right away. What's going on, I said. Do you need anything? No, she said. I'm just feeling a bit off. I need a little time by myself, okay? She hadn't sneezed or coughed, but all of a sudden I understood. She was afraid she had the virus. My whole body tensed up. Mom must have sensed I was still standing there. Don't worry, hun, she said firmly. Go downstairs. I'm sure you and Meredith can get the rest of dinner together. I'm going to take a rest. I turned and started down the stairs, my heart pounding so loud I could hardly hear anything else. I have to tell Dad, I thought. It was all I could think, over and over. Get Dad, get Dad. He'd know what to do. Telling Meredith would just have scared her, so I said I was going out for a bit and she should keep playing her game. It wouldn't take more than half an hour, I thought. Drive to the hospital, grab Dad, drive back. I took the keys off the hook and went to the car. The whole way there, my heartbeat chased my thoughts through my head. Mom couldn't really be sick. She didn't have any symptoms. She was just nervous and being extra careful. Dad would see that. He'd tell her she was fine and she'd calm down and we'd have a normal Thanksgiving dinner. But then I'd remember the way she'd stiffened up and walked out without a word and my pulse would thump even louder, and I had to tell myself the story all over again. I figure it's a miracle I managed not to drive into a telephone pole or a fire hydrant, but I reached the hospital in one piece. The parking lot was jammed. I wove back and forth along the rows twice, searching for a space. I've never seen the lot even halfway full before. Some of the cars had a fine layer of dirt all over them, like they'd been there a month without being used. Which, maybe they had. Maybe the people who had driven them there to get help had never come back out. I had to park a block away. I ran from there to the hospital doors. I hadn't been inside the hospital since those couple of days during our summer visit last year when I got that bad fever. Usually there's a nurse or an orderly at the desk in the reception room, and a mom or a dad with a crying kid, or one of the elderly islanders who's come in for a checkup. Never more than a couple of people. It's quiet, almost peaceful in a disinfected artificial light kind of way. Today it was crazy. The reception room was so packed I couldn't make out the desk, only a crowd of people shifting restlessly. Voices were echoing off the walls. I hadn't made it two steps from the front door when Mrs. Stanfield from fourth grade came in behind me with a little girl who was skipping and chattering between her sneezes. They rushed past me into the room. My daughter needs help, Mrs. Stanfield shouted, and someone yelled back, Everyone needs help. Wait your turn. And someone else started sobbing. All around, people were coughing and sneezing and rasping their fingers over their clothes to get at some itch they couldn't quite scratch away. The disinfectant smell was still there, but overwhelmed by sweat and something sour that made my stomach turn. 
I'd been in such a panic when I left the house that I'd forgotten my face mask. I felt like I'd walked in there naked. But no way was I turning back and going home and starting over. So I held my sleeve up to my nose and squeezed into the room.